Recently, the Pi Network core team Nicholas Kokalis and Chingin Pen answer some important questions from Pi Network pioneers. Well, I just make a summary in this video. But if you are not okay with the summary, I have dropped the link in the description of the video. Without wasting your time, let's get into it. And please don't forget to subscribe for more. And the first question is, will there be a place in the app to see how much of the total supply is still available for mining? Of course, there will be a Pi Block Explorer in the app later. In fact, there is already a place in the Bible Explorer called the Circulating Supply, from which you can reduce everything else based on the most recent version of the white paper. The next question is, will the locked up Pi be included in the app? Yes, there will be a list of all prior lookups when they expire, and you will be able to see how they affect the calculation of other values in that list and how it appears in other blockchains. Any locked up balance is included in the circulating system. Question 3. Will the lockup have a countdown timer that pioneers can consult to determine how long the lockup will be in effect? The short answer is yes. I guess the answer to this question is that because they will have to confirm, the person will just wait rather than having to wait for a week if they truly lost the key before they could press the button to say, I want a transfer. What if my Pi balance is transferred to that recently created wallet where I don't remember the private key? The answer to this is that the fact that they have complete control over non-custodial means, that there is no other way. But the fact that it's a blockchain just comes with those advantages and disadvantages, and many people lost their Bitcoin because of their lost private keys. Will there be a solution? Change lock settings before the transfer is started and completed in the mainnet. They are also thinking that there will be a button to start the migration, as I mentioned earlier. After this button is pressed, then there will be continuous transfers that will be happening automatically based on the current lockup setting. The lookup setting can be changed as many times as you want before you press that button. And once you press that button, the transfer will start. Will there be a notification when someone receives Pi from another wallet? Yes, probably there will be notification. There is currently notifications to people on the Pi browser when you receive a transfer of Pi, so in the same way you will receive Pi, and you will receive a notification that says, X amount of Pi has arrived in your wallet. Go check it out. Will they be only one wallet for Pioneer, or will there be more than one wallet for Pioneer? I'm not sure if you recall, but historically they originally had a different layout for passphrases and keys. One of the reasons they switched to this new system is that you can have multiple wallets with the same passphrase and you don't need to have multiple private keys. You can have multiple Pi wallets and if you so choose, you can have Bitcoin wallets. In other words, you can have any addresses you like. I don't want to promise that in the future people won't be able to create more wallets, but I'm sure there will be reasons for extending and expanding the one we have right now for security, privacy, and other reasons. Will there be a place in the app to see how many KYC users we have in the community? The answer to this probably depends on the app accessible on the blockchain, so you can simply count how many wallets are present, but they may develop a nicer user interface, perhaps on the home page or elsewhere in the app, that only shows the account. They may also create a page that shows the account of KYC pioneers, the number of nodes, the number of users, the amount of Pi locked, and other information, but in the worst case, just take a look at the blockchain. They are now requiring pioneers to pay one Pi as the cost of their KYC process, but this one Pi needs to cover several validation processes that were performed by multiple persons, not just one validator. There is an algorithm that decides based on how much they agree with each other depending on this. It will have either a few or more validate or more consensus votes which is why the steps may include things like verifying that this ID is a valid ID of the validator. It is not enough for one validator to say yes, this is correct. It must be at least several. Validator a human validator will basically have to like basically do that extraction, and we may also have to involve those validators with the potential name appeals that are happening that pioneers have to verify that this picture matches the picture on the ID, or verify that this data actually matches the validator. A human validator will basically have to like basically do that extraction. For the time being, all of the pie that is accumulated goes into a pool. And once we have the precise amount of pi that needs to go into each piece of work, we will start distributing it. However, we need to let at least a few thousand people finish KYC saying first, 
to get an accurate estimate of that number. And that is it for now. If you have more questions, please drop them in the comment section of this video. And also please don't forget to like and subscribe to see more updates on the Pi Network.